Hey everyone, I'm back with another video. This time about the TP-Link TL-SX308F. So uh, why I want to make a video about this switch? It is the perfect home lab fiber switch for 10 gigabit. Now, it is a SFP switch, so it is going to be um, perfect for certain people who only or who don't mind using SFP plus ports. There are no RJ45 10 gig um, ports here. But as if, if you're in the market for a 10 gig switch, you already know that anything with an RJ45 port is going to be very expensive. I mean, the competitors out there, Netgear, Unify with uh, their little small four, four or five port 10 gig um, flex switch, you know, that's $300. And then you got Microtech um, and, and a bunch of others. And, and they were all, I would say, somewhat pricey switches just to get RJ45. And, and RJ45 generates a lot of heat. So you're going to probably have fans in most of those, except for the Ubiquity one, which, because they only have four ports, they're probably uh, getting away with it with the uh, heat sinks that they have in it. But if you're looking for a, a cheap, switch you, you no longer need to just look at micro tick okay or micro tick i'm not sure how people pronounce it uh, because you know for about 140 dollars you can get a four port micro tick and i think for about 270 you can get an eight port uh, micro tick uh, but if you ever work with that uh, os of theirs it, it's it's not all that great but i mean it's not to say that the tp link uh, interface is all that great either but it's pretty nice to look at it's pretty and it's easy to understand so let's talk about why you want this switch and um, we'll go over some of the things I've tried on it uh, in, certain, in terms of compatibility so I've created a cheat sheet here let me go and give you some pros and cons of why you might want to buy this switch for your home lab or your home switch um, first of all it has a consistent GUI interface that is common to all of its switches. So if you go to buy another one of their business switches, you'll see pretty much a, a common interface. And if you, I'll be talking about Omada in a second, but if you go to all the different uh, easy, smart, and smart managed switches, they, they all have a common look and way and feel so that if you learn one or two or three of their switches, you'll be able to work with any of their products. Um, so, and, and if you've, I'm not going to actually go in and show you the interface um, because there's other videos out there showing, showing the interface. I, I don't want to repeat there with the, that work that is already out there. So go, go look for some TP link managed switches and uh, on YouTube and you'll be able to see the example of the uh, interfaces that they, they, they're, they're using, but they're pretty consistent. I have three of their switches and they all pretty much look the same. Um, another pro is that the switch can be either run standalone or with the Omada controller. Now, I bought this particular switch based on price, and I'll, I'll get that, get to that in a second. But this is a, an Omada controller controlled switch, which means it's centralized. So, if any of you out there have seen the videos, right? Um, there's plenty. I'm not even going to show you the Omada controller. It's there's plenty of videos on YouTube about the Omada controller and how it looks and how you configure it, how you create VLANs, and how you would assign it to the switch ports. This isn't the same thing. It's nothing more than an eight port switch. It's just that it can go in different speeds, right? So if you have an eight port um, gigabit switch, this is just an eight port 10 gigabit switch. It's the exact same control. Uh, you just get a little bit more flexibility there, right? So if you're looking for something to compete against Unify um, and you want, don't want to spend the Unify money because TP-Link will give you a switch for half the price of Unify. And if you look at the Omada controller, it'll do the same thing pretty much that the uh, Unify um, network uh, application or whatever they're calling it now, they renamed it. Uh, so, you know, and you, and you can host this yourself. You don't need to go buy the Omada controller product. You can install it on a uh, Ubuntu 2004 VM and install the Omada control yourself and you only need it when you need to configure a port, right? Shut it off when you don't need it. So it could be a virtual machine running on your workstation. It could be a virtual machine running on your, I don't know, if you have a Synology, for example, you can install Ubuntu on a Synology and run it off of there. 
Um, let me know if you want to see a how to install a mod on Ubuntu video. Uh, there is one person who's already made a video on YouTube on how to do that, but I basically followed their blog and their video and kind of did it myself my own way. But um, the core instructions came from that other video. But um, it's very, very easy to install Omada onto Ubuntu. So that's why uh, one of the reasons, that's the reason number two, uh, why you might want to use uh, or buy this switch. Um, number three, it has L2 plus features. So in standalone mode, you can do static routing. And why would you want static routing? Well, some people um, may want to introduce inter-VLAN routing right, on the switch. Why would you do that? Well, your router, which normally routes, and I usually, I normally adv advocate that you route on the router, not on your switch. But sometimes we don't all own 10 gig capable routers. Right. So, for instance, give you an example, you have a storage network in your home lab and you don't want to intermingle that with your data network. So you're going to have a different VLAN for your storage network. So, well, what happens if you have a, a machine that is on a different switch that needs to get to that network? Right. Well, you can VLAN it over there and have a dedicated NIC to go to that network. But sometimes you just don't want to use a dedicated NIC and you just want to use one NIC. To give you an example of that, I have one NIC on my uh, Windows 10 machine. I don't want to have two NICs on it, right? So with one NIC, it's a 10 gig NIC, and that means that I can get to my storage network at 10 gig speeds and to my LAN and get routed around my LAN at the one gig speed, right? Because I, I'm using this, the switch to do my inter-VLAN routing and not have my routes um, routed by the router itself. That's a lot of routes in that one sentence, right? So that's one of the reasons to get this switch. It has L2, uh, layer two static routing features. So you can do inter VLAN routing. And that's great for the lab too, right? If you want to do that. Reason number four um, is, yeah, well, you know what? I think I just uh, duplicated reason number two here. So you know what? I'm going to remove this. And uh, if I make this video again, I won't need that. There you go. Uh, reason number four, low price for eight SFP plus ports. Now, again, I already told you what the micro tick switch would cost. Uh, four ports for about $140 and then uh, about 270 for eight ports this switch when i bought it because with supply issues the prices will fluctuate when i bought it was 213 dollars that's right 213 dollars centrally managed by omada or in standalone mode with layer two routing right and and it's well let me go back to my it, it, it gives you all those features that i all those pluses and pros that i talked about Two hundred thirteen dollars. That's that's a bargain. Now um, the prices have gone up, and um, because of supply issues, and Amazon currently has it at uh, two hundred fifty three dollars from a specific reseller, not Amazon. So you gotta wait. Maybe it'll come back down. Maybe it won't come back down. Maybe you have to wait a year for it to come down. Who knows? With uh, there's hyperinflation going on right now, so. You, we just don't know if that's going to come back down. But, I mean, at, at if you can get it at the $214, $230 mark, I think it's still worth it. Um, you really can't beat this. Now, you know, what is it, you know, competing against really? Like I said in the beginning, it's really the MicroTik and the Unify switches. Um, those are the low-cost SFP Plus type switches, right? I think even Unify might be discontinuing. seems like they're going to be discontinuing, discontinuing the... Unify 16XG because there's always out of stock and it's not part of their main portfolio anymore. And that was a, the most affordable switch to uh, for a few years, right? At 200, at 550 dollars. So you know, 550 just to get 16 ports or 12 ports and then four 10 gig uh, RJ45 ports. So that's the key thing, right? That's why people would buy that switch because it has flexibility. You can do RJ45. Uh, and and SFP plus, but this one is only SFP plus. All right, so I'll talk about the compatibility of it in a second. Uh, and then the last uh, pro here is that it has no fans. 
right? So it, is, it could be in your office. There is there's no fans. It's quiet. Now, what are the cons? Well, if you look at, at the Switch, there's no RJ45 ports to, to for management or anything. That single RJ45 port you see on the picture, right? This picture right here. That single RJ45 port is a console port, and they give you a cable that is a nine-pin console cable. And if you if you saw my um, FS.com switch review, I complained about the same thing. Why are you, why are vendors still giving us nine-pin console cables when there's no no one with a laptop newer than ten years ten years old would even have that port? I have yet have I haven't seen a nine-pin console port in more than 10 years, if not more than that, maybe 12, 15 years. So that, that cable is useless. I don't know why they give it to you. You have to go to Amazon and buy yourself a USB to RJ45 um, console cable. Now, I wouldn't even bother with that, but you know, some people love to do the console thing as a backup. So that's con number two. Uh, con number three is that to set up the switch, you need a 10 gigabit transceiver. This, the switch by default, um, is on a specific subnet, right? 192.168.0.1, uh, and you need to either connect your switch or your laptop to it. But all the ports, all eight ports by default, are, are set to 10 gigabit, and you need some kind of 10 gigabit transceiver to be able to get it to even you know work. Um, once it's up and running, you can switch the port speed to one gigabit and then use a different transceiver. But if you if you reset the switch for any reason you, you're gonna need a 10 gig transceiver again to be able to to configure it again because it'll, it'll undo anything you did right so for instance give you an example of this you you, you set it up and you're in omada oh i don't want you know omada took away my routing i want to be able to route with it so you're going to remove it from omada it's going to do a reset once it resets all the ports go back to 10 gig that means that you have to have a 10 gig transceiver. So some people, I can imagine it already, will have a one gig capable switch that they will uplink to this or downlink to it, whatever you want to call it. So they would run all the 10 gig off of this switch and then they would connect a one gig switch to it via a one gig transceiver, such as this one right here. So this is a 10G Tech one gig SFP uh, transceiver that actually has been tested by me on the switch and it works fine. But to use this, you have to go into the switch and manually set the speed to one gig, which means that you need a 10 gig one. And this is the one I use, the 10G Tech SFP Plus transceiver with the RJ45 um, plug. And this one works, I've tested it and I'm using it right now. So you, when you plug this in, you'll be able to manage the switch and then choose a port where, the, where you will plug in the one gig transceiver, set the speed manually to one gig, and then this one will come up and come online. Otherwise it will not even show up in your switch. So you, if you uplink to another switch, a one gig switch using this, and you reset the switch, you will not be able to connect to your switch again. You will have to go and make sure you have a 10 gig transceiver to, to reconnect to it. Now, um, I didn't try this 10 gig transceiver at one gig speeds, but I did have this one on hand when I first set up the switch. This is a an FS.com 10 gig, um, you know, 10 base uh, T transceiver. And this was, mine is a uh, was a set up to to be compatible with their switches, but you know I figured the music there they're pretty much all the same these days. I plugged it in, and sure enough, it the 10 gig negotiated to one gig to uplink my one gig switch, and then I was able to set up the uh, the switch. Once I was able to set up the switch, set the ports the way I wanted, then I could just then I I swapped out the transceivers to start testing transceivers, and these two worked fine. And then I also joined it to Omada and then unjoined it from Omada to see what would happen. And of course, exactly what I thought would happen is that the switch reset back to factory default when you um, remove it from Omada. So then that required me to have a 10 gig transceiver to go back on to the switch to be able to manage it. So just be aware that is a con. Um, it doesn't it doesn't auto detect the transceiver you have. It only works with 10 gig transceivers when it's reset to factory default. Um, but other than that, you can work around that because you're most likely, if you're buying a 10 gig switch, you're mostly, most likely going to have some way of connecting to this switch, either 
with an uplink to your your main network or with a transceiver such as this to connect it to your laptop to to pre-configure it right uh, as that's up to you but no, that's the only uh, negative now I will say that I've tested this GBIC um, well not GBIC this transceiver this transceiver and this transceiver and they all work fine I also have tested this high fiber DAC cable on it and it works fine uh, and um, I'm actually linking uh, this high fiber cable to my Windows 10 machine with a Mellanox Connect X3 um, I paid uh, $35 for mine but uh, you can see it's coming down in price with these used ones so a $26 NIC can you put it in Windows 10 and you'll be able to connect to um, to the switch now uh, just an FYI I, I bought m multiples of these and um, I tried to upgrade the firmware using the WinOS drivers and it bricked my uh, my card so just be aware, I would say if you buy these used, just leave it alone. Don't bother with the firmware. If you're going to update the firmware, please know what you're doing. Please find the correct drivers and software. Um, I probably did something wrong, but I mean, it, it, I, I'm mean, pretty sure I researched and downloaded the correct drivers, but either way, it got bricked. So um, just be aware that if you're buying these used, you might want to just leave the firmware on there. Now, another thing, uh, a tip about this card in Windows 10 is that uh, it doesn't um, plug and play correctly in Windows right because if you don't install drivers it won't show up in the control panel um, I can't show you on this machine because I'm, this is not the machine with the card in it but basically you reboot twice and it'll show up in your uh, as a as a device um, on your uh, in your old um, adapter options page and you can configure it with an IP address and all that but um, Windows has another uh, has a connectivity page and let me see if I can show you so if you go to here it won't show up here so if you're using the uh, connect x3 you will not see it here but if you go to the adapter options you'll see it here so um, the only reason I mentioned that is because if it shows up here, you can then decide whether you're on the public network or a private net network profile. Without the drivers installed, you don't see that, so hence you can't control it. And if Windows wants to firewall it, and you go, you'll be scratching your head one, wondering why it's not working. Um, like say, for instance, you're running some software on your Windows box and nothing can see it. It will be because of that, right? Because you couldn't, you couldn't control it here, right? It doesn't show up here. So, you know, that's the only reason I would say I would caution you about using the Connect X3 on Windows 10. Um, all right, I think I've given you everything I wanted to, to mention. It's just a great switch at a great price. If you can get it for 213 230 somewhere around there, I think that's a great price. And it's controlled by Omada. Uh, your mileage may vary. But hope hope this helps someone out there with their home lab. Take care.